And we welcome you to Baton Rouge on this Friday afternoon. I'm Victor Howell. Welcome to the Maravich Assembly Center. Game one of the Baton Rouge Regional has concluded with Middle Tennessee getting the win over Louisville 71-69. to We are joined by head coach Rick Ensel to my immediate left on the far end. We have Jalen Gregory star uh, joining us and then also Savannah Wheeler. Uh, coach, we will start, give you an opportunity for an opening comment. Then we will then go to questions for the players first, please. After Coach's opening statement, we'll address the players so then we can then dismiss them back to the locker room and then we will go with questions uh, for Coach. Coach, congratulations, and the microphone is yours. Thank you. Someone y yesterday asked me about our slow starts, and I said, I hope we didn't have one. Well, <laughs> we had one. Um, I thought they'd come out ready to play. I mean, I knew that Jeff was going to have them ready. I knew that he was going to use the last time they played us as motivation, and we tried to get that across to our players. And, uh, you know, we had some defensive assignments missed, and, and they hit some great they, – they made some great shots, took us to the basket, and – you know, the ball was falling for them. Yeah. We hung in there and got back at halftime. You know, I think we were down 11 at halftime, and we talked about, you know, cutting that in half by the end of the third quarter. And I think we ended up taking the lead by the end of the third quarter, so that put us right in it. So it was just a – basically it came down just to a, a guts of willpower from both teams who was going to will themselves to victory, and I'm awful proud of our young ladies. Coach, thank you. If you address questions for the players, we are streaming, so please raise your hand. We'll bring a microphone to you. If you'll introduce yourself, your affiliation, and then if you'll please address which player you are talking to. Uh, with that, let's open up the floor for questions for the players. Savannah, Sam Doughton, GoBlueRaiders.com. You seem to really take uh, Coach's halftime message to heart. You know, had 14 points in that third quarter. What changed for you coming out of the locker room at halftime? How were you able to find your shots during that stretch? Well, in the first, first half, you know, I missed a lot of easy baskets. I mean, I'm the first player of the game, I missed a layup. So, I mean, three or four layups I missed in the first half. So, I mean, yeah, at halftime, they just kept telling me, you know, I, I got to hit those. And going off what Coach said, that's something that we have a slow start in the first quarter. But, you know, I was just keep telling myself to stay aggressive, keep staying aggressive, and just keep playing within myself, and eventually one's going to fall. Jerry Lee Willard, Jr., the College Sports Report. Jalen, just talk about finishing in the fourth quarter when you were able to, it was, it was, seemed like it was your time. Yeah, it was just something that I have to do for my team. We each, we're a great team and we each have our nights and tonight just happened to be my night and then Savannah picked it up. But we know what it felt like last year when we got beat and we did not want to relive that moment. And so we really just pulled together and finished the game. Uh, Savannah, uh, Calvin White, MTSU sidelines. You guys outscored Louisville 44 to 31 in the second half. What kind of defensive adjustments did you make at halftime? I mean, really, I think. I mean, I thought our defense, um, our defense was pretty good. I thought in the first half, it's just we weren't hitting shots. I mean, if you look at our free throws, I mean, we got 23 for 33 from free throws. So if we would have made all of our free throws, you know, we went up. It's probably the worst free throw shooting we've had. This yeah, year. I mean, we. Probably beat them by close to 10, maybe, if we would hit those. But I mean, really, our def defense was still there in the first half. We just we just didn't hit. But you know, we're a team that we don't give up. We keep playing hard. We keep fighting. And you know, our crowd. I mean, our fan base. I mean, they traveled down here supporting us. And gotta credit them. So they definitely played a role into our momentum in, in the second half. Jalen, that you know, huddle right at the end of the first quarter, y'all down, I think, 14, 16 at that point in time. What, what was the message that led y'all to get a spark really quick and get on that quick scoring run? Honestly, it's a blur. But if I had to guess, <laughs> it was probably that we weren't going to lose the game. We had to step up and take control just like we have like this past year. And so it was probably just telling us to lock in. No. <laughs> uh, this is for Savannah and Jalen. Uh, this is Blake Spurrier from WNBA Swish. Uh, what was what did the coach say to y'all at halftime when y'all were down 11 points? I mean, what were the basically years? just yeah. we got hit shots, but we had a lot of good open looks, and we just had to bury them. And then this one right here comes out like three for three, and I mean she she definitely got us going the first half, but. You know, once one starts clicking, eventually some others are going to start clicking, and I think that's just what really played a role in this. Any other questions for the players before we let them get back to the locker room? We're all good? 
Savannah, Jen, congratulations. Thank you for your time. We'll see you on Sunday. All right, we'll open up the floor for questions for, uh, for Coach. Same policy, please, if you'll introduce yourself since we're streaming. And uh, we'll open up for questions for Coach. Coach Ansel, it's been a while since we, we've seen each other. Yeah. Uh, but today was one of those days where things didn't go like you wanted to to start the game, but you had your halftime talk, and the second half being the ha second half. I don't think the halftime talk was anything except the fact that we just had to take care of business um, and I think I looked at all of them and said we're not losing you know we've got this thing cut to 11 let's cut it in half and go into the fourth quarter and take our chances and like I said fortunately we got the thing we took the lead at that point our crowd got in it I think our players then realized hey this is a ball game and we've been in a lot of close games this year we've won a lot of games about 26 27 points but we've been in some close games going into the fourth quarter we've been tied up about I don't know, maybe seven or eight, maybe even more than that games, and we would take it on out and win it by 21, 25, 26 points in the fourth quarter. So we knew the fourth quarter all year long has kind of been ours. And we came out, we did what we needed to do. We missed some free throws down the stretch. Um, Camille missed a couple of free throws. Uh, Jalen missed a free throw. Courtney missed two. We don't do that. We're a very, very, very good free throw shooting team, probably one of the best free throw shooting teams in the country. Now, it surprised me when I saw that uh, happening out there. Coach, it seemed like Louisville was really dominating the boards in the first quarter. That led to a lot of their early success. How did you all adjust to, to get more rebounds you know, the rest of the way? I don't know that we did adjust, Sam, to be honest with you, because uh, they're just a, we knew going in that we had to keep them off the boards, and they were just monsters on the boards. I mean, they, they've got some very athletic, uh, good – Good, a tall young ladies that can, has got great athleticism, and they just went in there and just got got the rebound, just muscled it in. And then uh, I thought early on, though, we we missed some defensive assignments. We gave them some straight line drives that we shouldn't have given up, and though, er, they converted every one of those. I think it was like four straight line drives they got in that first quarter. I'll go back and look at the film after a while, but I, but we got we can't have that. Rick, this is you guys' first NCAA tournament win since 2007. Although the, the net ranking probably would have got you here anyway, but do you feel like this win kind of validates that you guys belong? You know, it's, it's not like that we hadn't been trying to win. We've lost three of those games by one point. I think we lost to Michigan State. We led 39 minutes and 45 seconds. Against Mississippi State, I think we led 39 minutes and maybe 10 seconds. They beat us at the end of the game. And that, that was tough. So I'm just sitting here watching a lot of the young ladies that was on that team is texting us right now, and I'm sure they got tears in their eyes because we, we lost those games. We had total control of both of those games. And in the end, we ended up losing them. But this bunch right here, I'm telling you, they, they just got so much grit. They're not going to quit. They're not going to give up. Most teams would have quit out there tonight. I've seen that happen. I've seen it already happen in this tournament. Uh, you know, team get down 12, 14 points. Next thing you know, you're down 25. You, we'd went, we went to work there in the second quarter and scored, I think, five straight points when he called a timeout. And that kind of put us back in a good frame of mind coming to the bench. So you just touched on it. But um, I just wondered if and Brett Martell here with Associated Press, if you could put in perspective, I know you felt all confident all along you could come back. But, you know, you look on paper and, and an 11 seed is down by 18 to Louisville, which is a major program and a six seed. Um, and then you pull off the, not only the third largest comeback or tied for third largest in NCAA women's tournament history, but you'd come all the way back basically before the end of the third quarter. Um, can, you, can you just put that in perspective in your experience well, as a coach? That, the, if, if, you, if you're in our practice every day, everything we do is timed. I think some of you were there yesterday. So that kind of, get your mindset where it needs to be. Every drill, everything we do, running the floor, we got it timed. Well, when we got those five points back there in the second quarter, at that point I could see our, our whole body language, our whole demeanor changed with every player that we had. Courtney came back in. Uh, Courtney was, if you look, she's one of our better players. She's two for nine, one for six and three. That's unusual right there. But she got seven rebounds, seven points. Uh, then you got Nas that ended up, what, with 11 points and uh, 12 rebounds, double-double. 
You know, we hit the baskets when we had to hit them. I, I'm sorry if I missed your opening statement, but uh, I just thought on Wheeler, um, two points in the first half, 20 in the second. Can you help that explain? That does surprise me. She, that's why she's player of the year in our conference. That's why she's MVP of the conference tournament. That right there, because she's a scoring machine. And you know, just when you think you got her stop, she slides through and gets a three. The next thing you know, she hits another three. Then she hits a little two floater there. That's we've our fan base has seen her hit all year long. I knew when it left her hands, it was in, and they, I could see the look on their face. They were startled that she let it go right there because the big kid was all over the top of her. And I tell you, a, a, a large part of us winning the game was her big girl getting four fouls and having to go out. We made a big push when that happened. You know, they didn't have anybody else like her, and we didn't either. Coach, uh, y'all had, I mean, it was a big uh, defensive adjustment in the, in, the, in the third quarter. What was that big defensive adjustment that y'all made? Guys, we didn't have a whole lot of defensive adjustments, to be honest with you. We played it straight up just like we did at the beginning of the game. We were just getting over and covering. We were, we were picking up their sets. We didn't do a good job early. We did a good job late. Now, when they started making that pushback, that little guard got in there and hit about three floaters in a row. We didn't need that to happen, and that was a very poor job on our part for deep. Where I think we're up nine, she comes in, hits three floaters, and then we're up three. So, uh, you know, we got to do a better job than that. One more question for Coach here in the front. Coach, getting this far also speaks about your uh, conference, the conference that you all are in. Talk about how that, that playing in that conference and the conference tournament in CUSA uh, prepared you all for this season's uh, postseason run. Well, I'm going to be honest with you. I hate to bring up these two programs, but we have got two programs in our conference that's been the Final Four, and one of them's won a national championship, maybe maybe more than one. So we're not, we got a pretty good conference, you know. And those La Tech, Western Kentucky, uh, you can just come right down the line. UTEP, they've all got good players and they've got good coaches. And uh, you know, from from the very beginning, first game in our conference uh, season. Uh, La Tech took us to overtime. We had to win a game in overtime. And then right at the end of the year, to finish this thing out for us to go undefeated, we had to play two of the toughest teams in our conference back to back. One of them was Liberty, the other was La Tech. And Liberty just come in our conference this year and you go look at the success they had in their, in the conference they were in. I think they dominated and won it year in and year out. So Conference USA is pretty pretty good uh, conference. I'll just tell you, and it's gonna get better. It's going to get better because we're bringing in Delaware. And, uh, you know, if we, we see another good program out there, our presidents, they'll be bringing them in. So, you know, we're not I'm, – I'm really proud to be Conference USA, to be honest with you. Thanks, Coach. Coach, appreciate your time. Again, congratulations. We'll see you on Sunday. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank Louisville very will be – uh, Thank you all. We'll have Louisville head coach and a couple of players here in just a moment. Again, LSU and Rice set the tip off at 314. <laughs> Louisville uh, coach and players will be here in just a moment.
All right, welcome you back to Baton Rouge. We're now joined by head coach Jeff Walls with Louisville. We are expecting Olivia Cochran and Marissa Russell to join us. As soon as they arrive, we will let them sit and uh, we will do our same format. We'll let coach have his opening comment here. When the players come in, we'll address questions to the players first. We'll let the girls go back to the locker room and then we'll continue with coach. Coach, we appreciate your time and the microphone is yours. Yeah, no, first I'd like to uh, congratulate uh, MTSU and Rick and, and, and his team. I thought they played extremely well, uh, continue to fight continue to just compete um, you know and it was just a, a a really really bad second quarter and third quarter for us and it's been kind of the story of uh, of our year unfortunately we'll have have two good quarters two two solid quarters and then we have two that we just we don't play well and it's not just on the offensive end it's the defensive end um, so we're going to have to have to go back now, and with the uh, players that we have returning, we're going to have to really evaluate, you know, like what can we do as coaches to help change that? Because I thought, you know, we did a lot of good things. I thought we played it at the pace we wanted to play in the first quarter, a little bit in the second quarter, um, and then unfortunately just just did not come up with plays when when we needed to there late in the game. Let's see, Coach, if there's a few players that come in. Yeah. No, come on up. Let's give Marissa and Olivia just a second here to come join us and sit down. Thank you all for joining us. Now, these, these cups up here, what do you got? That's fresh. That's water. Okay, I want to make sure nobody's drinking no, no, it. We, you know. we, we did them fresh for you all. Yep. Marissa and Olivia, thank you all for joining us. Uh, Coach has had a chance to speak. So for those who have questions uh, for either Marissa or Olivia, let's start with them. We appreciate their time. We'll talk to questions for the players first. A question for both Marissa and Olivia. Jerry Lee Woodley Jr., the College Sports Report. Coach just mentioned in his open, opening statement, uh, two good quarters, two quarters that were mediocre. Uh, just talk about the, yeah. the team's mental. Yeah. Um, <laughs> It's a, it's a very painful right now. He's right. Um, we got we to gotta finish games. This happened to, he's mentioned it before to us in the locker room. We have to finish games. Um, we did this at Notre Dame. We did this at the ACC tournament. And it, it this hurts. And um, sorry. And he's going to come in here and take the blame. But it's on us as a team, as players. We, we, it's, just, it's hard. <laughs> he's, a, he's a great guy. He's a great coach. <laughs> We've been here for four years, and, and we know the culture here. We know the standard here, and this is not it. And I apologize to our fans, to our, our, our senior administrators, our staff. This is not Louisville women's basketball. Our alumni, this is not who we are. And it's, I feel like a failure, and I apologize. Oh, you got nothing to say. Alexis Cuba, Louisville Career General. Uh, Marissa Olivia, did you guys notice anything different, or what was kind of just? I know you had the break in between the tournaments, but did you guys feel good coming in, or what was that like? I mean, you got off to a hot start, but it just seemed like. You know, yeah, yeah, we felt good. I thought we was gonna win the game. Um, um, like Coach Wall said, we just had a bad second half, and we've been doing that all year, um, and we've been trying to emphasize them that cars fly in March, but. Um, we didn't fly today, so um, we're just going to keep working um, during the spring and the summer and um, work on us and get our culture back. Um, we just got to learn to be tough. Um, we got to learn how to fight adversity, um, which we haven't been doing all season. So, um, yeah. Dominique Gates, WLKY in Louisville. This is for both of you. But first, just Marissa, you talked about just the standard of this program. Just even though, you know, just for these players coming back, just how much could that be used as fuel? Because, like I said, this first round exit isn't normal for this program. And for Oprah, you know, for the players that have the opportunity, how much, you know, I guess it's easy motivation. I just could you kind of explain that for you? All? Yeah, um, I, I give our, our team props. We, we we finished last year with four players on our roster, and, and the coaches did a great job of recruiting and, and getting these girls, in, and they bought in as much as they could. They, they worked really hard throughout the season. It's it's not easy. I've been here for four years. I played for this guy. It's 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 a up and down roller coaster, but he loves us, and, and we want to do, and he holds us to a high level, and, and we want to be a lead, and that's what we hold each other to. Um, 
like you said, we have we have a, a big roster coming back. We have more returners coming back. Um, so that's going to be really good in terms of carrying that culture over and, and having this bad taste in our mouth throughout the whole spring and summer. And um, obviously, come, we have time off for now, and then we're coming right back early. So let's just get to work and, 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 and use this as fuel. Going off of that, what do you guys say to these players who just got here this year? You know, obviously, you have... Jada and Aleph coming back, what do you say to them and to get them to know that, hey, this is not what we do? We got to get in the gym. It start by it started in practice. We got to go learn how to go hard in practice um, because that's what's going to carry over on the court, how like how hard we go. Our motor, we got to have a better motor. We got to give better effort. Um, but I feel like this team, like we just conjoined so fast and we had to learn each other so fast. So that's why we were just so up and down and roller coaster. But um, the four years I've been here, I don't play on four different teams, so um, <laughs> it's just about how how you adjust to it and how 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 you buy in. Um, and yeah, um, we just gonna get in the gym, do something, and work. Um, who want to stay, stay. Who want to go, go. One hundred percent. Uh, Vivian and Marissa, uh, y'all Blake Spadaro from WNBA Swish. Uh, y'all were up sixteen points in the first quarter, and then. Just an avalanche shit show in the in the second and in, in the third quarter. What exactly do y'all think went wrong? We fouled too much. Um, yeah. We gave them um, opportunity on the free throw line, um, and like I said, we didn't play hard. We didn't. Sometimes we didn't box out, rebound. Like we needed a big, we needed one rebound um, to get one shot, and we couldn't come up with it. Um, we just gotta learn how to finish games, and um, like I said, play through adversity. And um, a big emphasis was playing all 40 minutes of the game. Obviously, we didn't do that today. So um, we didn't. that's why that happened. We didn't do that. Um, the mental focus, just kind of staying locked in the whole entire 40 minutes. It's just not what we did today. One last question for the players, Brett. Hey, Olivia, in terms of the fouls, um, MTSU seemed to think it was quite a big deal that when you got your fourth and um, had to sit for a bit, and they feel like they made most of their progress there. And I was just wondering, if you could, I know some games just go like this. Was it anything they did, or was it just tough calls, or how do you view how that all happened? Um, I don't really know how to answer that, but um, my coaches was, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my coaches um, emphasized all we owe. Oh, we need you in the game, don't foul. And um, some of the calls was tough, but some of the, call, the calls I got was dumb fouls on me. Um, I take full responsibility for that. Um, but like I said, I, when I got out on the court, I battled. I went hard um, for my teammates, for my coaches, and um, I'm sorry. You're a fantastic bed. Mm, you yeah. both were. Yeah, that's the one thing about Olivia. I played with her for four years. I've, I've never doubted that she's going to go on the floor and give her best. We were down, I don't even know, in that fourth quarter, and, and we were like, she's like, we got to go to the last to the last second goes, and, sh and she did that. And I'm, I'm so proud of her. We, we've we known each other for years. We're going to do this again Next for another year because sure. this, is, this is not <laughs> it. This is not it. And, and I, like, Coach, I keep saying it, Coach Walls is a great coach, and um, we're not, we don't pay attention to social media, but I just want to say, He's made some comments, obviously the NIL stuff about the turnovers and stuff. But he's a great, he's a great guy. He, I, I, I just don't like some. Some people say some stuff about this guy, and he can't say it by himself because, you know, he's lovely. But um, <laughs> as as his player, I've been here for four years. I'm coming back for five years. I hope I don't know what who sees this, whatever. But we're coming back because of him. We're, we're coming back, and we're going to go further into the tournament next year. I promise you that. I don't care who's listening. I don't care who's watching. We're coming back because he's a great. I want to swear. Sorry. He's a great <laughs> effing coach. And, and that's why we're coming back. I don't care what other people have to say. I don't care what coaches are saying at, at other teams. Recruits, if you want to win, come here. I don't, I don't care. We're, this is a different season. This is a different team. And we're going to hold our team to a higher standard. We're leaders here, and, and that's what's going to happen next year. And that's yeah, a promise. For sure. Uh, Marissa and Olivia, appreciate your time. I know it's your motions. And by the way, you're as far from failure as possible. Appreciate Not even close. Thank you for the way that we are presented. Congratulations on your season. And uh, thank you for your time. Okay, any other questions now for Coach? We appreciate the players with their time. We can ask a few questions now for Coach. All right, Coach. Good to see you, young man. Same here. <laughs> Your players talked about what you all talked about every day and, being, and coming back. I didn't know the turnover was that large until I saw you all had started conference play, and I was like, this is going to be a struggle. But you are who you are, and you get as far as you, get as, far as you can go with the kids that you have that want to play. Let's talk about this particular squad 
and the two young ladies that just walked away. Uh, I, 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 I love this group, and I told them in the locker room that it's been one of the most enjoyable seasons that I've had. Uh, had, no, had no drama. Uh, they're, they're great kids. Uh, and I call them kids because I treat them like they're my own kids. I love them like they're my own. And as I always say, my two are, are behind, two of my four are behind me, and my two don't like me all the time either because it's called parenting. You have to discipline sometimes. But they both know I love them, and my players know I love them as well. It, it just sucks. No, nobody wants to, to go out this, this way. I mean, it was a, a roller coaster of, of a year. And, you know, I'm not making excuses. I just state facts that, you know, I was pushing them pretty darn hard there in the middle of, of February. And, and that game at Syracuse took a, took a lot out of a few of them. You know, when you're getting pushed and challenged and all of a sudden that shit happens, it was like, oh, you're kidding. And, you know, and then, and then today, it's not an excuse, it's part of life. I mean, Sid gutted it out for 30 minutes and Sid's sick. You know, it, Sid never asked to, 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 uh, to come out of a game. And she must ask five, five or six times. You know, and, and that's part of it. So it's, it's not an excuse. It's just I, I felt really bad for her. You know, you, you go through an entire season. I don't think she's been sick all year. And you get to the game in the NCAA tournament, and I saw her this morning at breakfast, and I was like, you, you going to be okay? She's like, I, I'm fine, I'm fine. Um, and if you, for those that, that follow us a lot, it, it, you could just see it energy-wise from her. Uh, but O and, and Riss, I'm really proud of them. They competed. They, they fought. It just, we, we didn't make some plays when you had, you had to make plays. And you tip your hat to them. And they made some, some big shots when it mattered. And we had some shots when it was, you know, we're up two, up three, where if you, you know, you make it, you're back to five. We had a, a, a couple threes that went in and out. Uh, you know, and you go back, you're going to go back and look at things, what could have been. I'm, I'm looking, you know, the, the, tra the, the, the transition basket in the, in the second quarter that got waved off, walk uh, a travel's called when, when Nina makes it. You know, it, it was going to put it at 20, and then it's like, okay, can you keep rolling? And she very well may have walked. And it's just a, you know, it's one of those, it's like, ah, damn, you had that opportunity. And the thing that we talk to our players about is every possession this time of year, you have to play with urgency. Every, every possession matters, every single one. And unfortunately, we didn't do a great job of playing every possession with that type of urgency. Uh, but again, give a ton of credit to MTSU and Coach Insel and his staff uh, because they played a really good basketball game. Two-part question. You've said that a lot as far as this team being one of the most enjoyable ones you've had. What made it enjoyable, and how do you, I guess, just kind of really put everything into perspective? Because obviously this is the first for you two losing in the first round as yeah. a coach. Yeah, no, it, I mean, I'll start with that. It sucks. I mean, there's no other way to, way to put it. I mean, you know, we have had a ton of success here in postseason play, and this is not what we're used to. Uh, I'll take the responsibility for that. I mean, I've got to get back to doing things the way, you know, I've done them in the past. I've got to challenge them more. I've got, I've got to get them in shape. I've got to d d demand things, demand more from them. It, every Practice can't be comfortable. It's got to be uncomfortable. So then when you get in the games, no matter how hard it goes, you've experienced all of that in practice. So I've got to get back to just taking some things, some things over and really challenging them and pushing them. Uh, so that's my fault. But they're great kids because, I mean, nobody's complaining about somebody else shooting. Nobody's complaining. I mean, they, they just wanted to win. And it's been enjoyable. I mean, it really has. I mean, it's, it's been great. It, the year went by as fast as I've had in a long time. You know, normally there there have been a few years that we we've, we've been really good, and it's February and I'm like, damn, this shit over yet? Because it because it's it, it was just a grind, 
you know, but this group's been, been fantastic. I'm excited about our incoming class for next year, excited about our returning uh, uh, players. And I, 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 I think our future is really bright. I mean, it, I, I think we're going to make great strides next year, especially with O and Riss coming back. And a Aleph has really gotten better and better. I mean, it's a kid that I saw play the first week in August and then is on campus in September. I recruited her for two weeks, convinced her, you know, convinced her to come. She knew nobody. So she she really didn't even have a preseason at all. And now we've got the opportunity to have a postseason with her, spring workouts, summer, and I think she's only going to get better. Coach, I appreciate your honesty. If you have time for one more question with Brett. Oh, i got AP. plenty of time. Okay. Yeah, hey. All right, last sure, question, I Brett. Sure. Where... Um, I, just, I noticed your physical reaction as the last shot kind of hit the backboard and hit the rim and went out. But I was wondering if you could just kind of – Say what you were thinking at that point. It just seemed like we missed it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> there's, you know, I, hey, Risk got off a look, and you know, when I watched, I was like, it, it's got a little bit of a chance. We'll see what happens, and it it, it didn't go in. I mean, it, it's one of those. I, and of course, it sucks. I mean, I hate to lose. Hate 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 to lose at anything. But at the same time. I've done it my entire career is I'm going to make sure I go down to that other end and give respect to the coaches, their players, wish them luck, can congratulate them because it's what you're supposed to do. You know, so that's, you know, we, we have won a lot here. We have won a lot. And I respect the coaches that, that do that. And I've always told myself, I'm always going to do it. We've lost some heartbreakers. And it's never going to change. So do you, are you upset you lost? Yes. But you also know to simply walk down to that uh, other end, congratulate the players and the coaches. Jeff, thank you for your time. Congratulations on your season. We appreciate it very much. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining us here post game for Louisville and Middle Tennessee. We'll be back with you immediately following the conclusion of our second game here in Baton Rouge between LSU and Rice. Until then, have a good Friday afternoon.